So let's continue our work on graphing aggregate expenditures. Again, we are using the workbook aggregate expenditures here at drstephpowers.github.io slash econ in Python. Once you're in here, click in, go to Google Collab, log in uh, to your Google account. So you have a copy that you can edit and run. That's your copy to do with as you wish. Uh, so uh, you'll need to log in and save a copy and then you can save as uh, so that you have your copy with your code in it. All right, so returning to where we were working, let's go back. We had previously graphed the aggregate expenditure function and found a formula for aggregate expenditures that was 300 plus 0 0.5 Y. Now we're gonna break that down. So we're going back to our table here and we're gonna look at consumption and savings. So notice here as our national income increases, so does the amount of household spending, that's the consumption spending, and so does the amount we save. It changes as our national income, the collective amount of money we have uh, increases. So let's graph that. So we're going to say C equals, and then we're just typing the information from that table, uh, putting it in parentheses here, and entering it in. And then we can plot that consumption function. So national income is on the X or horizontal axes and C our consumption is on the vertical. We're going to have a label that says national income on the horizontal and the vertical label is gonna be consumption spending. We add a grid so that it's easier to see and we simply run this. If you didn't run the previous code, you will need this import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT in order to get that graph. But since we've already installed that package, we can go right to graphing. So we can see here as national income increases, consumption spending increases. To figure out how much consumption spending increases as national income increases, we can use the exact same method we just used with aggregate expenditures. So we're gonna use national income, and since we already made national income in the appropriate format, so it needed to be reshaped because it's the one on the x-axis. So we reshape, you see this negative one, one, and we made it an array. So if you've already done this line of code here with ni equals, you don't have to do it again. You've already put it that way and you haven't changed it since. And then just like we did with the aggregate expenditures where we turn that data into an array, we need to do the same thing with consumption spending. So we'll turn that into an array. We already have the reshaped national income which means we simply just need to call our model linear regression. We're gonna fit it so that national income's on the horizontal, consumption spending is on the vertical. So it's going to fit a line on top of our blue graph here. And then we just need it to tell us the coefficient and the intercept. So again, you just do model.coefficient and an underscore, and that will give us the slope. And we do model.intercept underscore, and that will tell us where it crosses here when national income is zero. So this 4.9999999, right, we can round to five. So we get a formula for consumption spending that is five. So when national income is zero, we are still spending $5 as households. There's certain things we need to survive even if we collectively have no income. And then as our income increases, so as we get more and more income, for every additional $100 of national income, households are spending 60 of it, or for every dollar, 60 cents. So that means we have a formula of five plus 0.6 Y, okay? So the process for graphing the rest of these is very much the same. So let's look at savings. But before we do that, let's look at one more thing here, which is what would cause this consumption function to shift up or down. When we talk about the consumption function shifting up and down, we are not changing the slope, we are only changing this intercept of five. So we need to ask ourselves, what would get us to spend more money even if there was no change in our income? Well, as we talked about in the other videos, if you have a change in wealth, so you inherit a bunch of money, you do well in the stock market, your actual income hasn't changed, but you are gonna spend more money. When there are changes in prices, so your income hasn't changed, but prices go down, 
deflation, you can afford more. Uh, inflation, you can afford less. That's going to shift that consumption function down. So this is the wealth effect and the real balance effect we talked about in the previous videos. There is also a change, a shift in that consumption function if there's a change in the age of durable goods. So if your refrigerator is getting old, uh, your water heater, these are things you can't live without. Uh, so even if your income hasn't changed, as those items get older, you're more likely to have to replace them, which means if we're graphing our consumption function, then we're talking about it shifting up. And there's one more thing that shifts this consumption function, and that is a change in consumer expectations. If we all think things are getting better, if we think we're going to have more income in the future, our actual income, so wherever we are here as a society, uh, hasn't changed, but in anticipation of a higher income in the future, we'll start spending more now, which then is shifting up this whole line because the income hasn't changed yet. So here we have our consumption function. Now let's look at savings. So to plot our savings function, it's the exact same method you just use for consumption. So we need to pull from the table our savings and we can just set S equals and then put in parentheses our data and load her in. And then we want to plot it. So here we're gonna use the same package as before. We don't have to load it back in. If this is your first graph, uh, you will need to do this import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. But since we've already loaded it in for our previous graphs, we can just start plotting. So plt.plot, x-axis is the national income, vertical axis is the savings, we're going to mark it with dots, x-label is going to be national income, y-label is savings, and we're going to plot a grid and have it show the graph. So you can see once you've plotted one of these, Plotting each one is no different. All you're doing is loading in the next set of data. So here we have our savings function. Notice how when national income increases, uh, we save more. Now notice here when national income is zero, the amount of savings that we're doing collectively is negative. We have dis savings. So we're actually pulling money out of our savings account and part of that money we pull out of savings is going to that $5 that we're doing in consumption spending. Where's the rest going? Well, to taxes, because even if your income is zero, there are taxes you still have to pay. So we're pulling money out of savings, and then as we make more and more income, we can put money into savings. So let's find the formula for the savings function. We need the intercept and we need the slope. To do this, we need to convert our data into an array. So here we have our savings function. This np.array says use the package numpy and convert it into an array. You already converted national income into an array and reshaped it so it, it matched the format that the linear regression command needed. So you don't have to do it again, but if you didn't do it before, just go back up, this is the line that you need in order to make that logistic regression uh, command work. So you can see that national income has np.array and it's reshaped. Okay, let's go back down. Let's run our model, linear regression. We're gonna fit national income on the x-axis, savings on the vertical, and then we need it to give us the coefficient and the intercept. So notice the intercept here is minus 65. So the first part of our formula is S equals negative 65 plus 0.2Y. When national income is zero, we're pulling $65 out of savings collectively. Then as our income increases, for every $100, every additional $100 in national income, we are saving 20 bucks more or for every additional dollar in national income, we're saving 20 cents. So our formula is S equals negative 65 plus 0.2Y.